Today we're going to talk about 10.2, which is rational exponents. The first thing I want you to stop and remember is all of your rules from exponents still follow the same pieces in this section. You still have your product rule, your quotient rule, your power rule. You still have the same rule for negative exponents. The difference in this section is we're now going to have exponents that are fractions. Anytime you find yourself getting confused, I want you to stop, make an example without um, fraction exponents, and ask yourself, what would you have done? Still can write your examples down on your page. It might be a good idea to data dump them, to know when, are my, when am I adding my exponents, when am I subtracting my exponents, which is actually at the end of this section. So the first thing we're going to do is start off with looking at what does it mean when we have an exponent in our, um, uh, sorry, a fraction in our exponent? So again, remember it's important to know what your base is, if the negative is included or not. It's not a new concept, but the key is if I have a root, that root is my denominator for my exponent. So I'm just going to write real quickly a few examples here. If I had the square root of x, that's the same thing as the x to the half power. If I have the cube root of x, that's the same thing as x to the one-third power. If I have the fourth root of x, that's the same thing as x to the one-fourth power. The root or index is the same thing as the denominator of the exponent. So you may want to write that down for yourself in words. Okay? The root is the denominator for the exponent. So. Eventually, I'd like you to be able to do it without writing it down, but it's never wrong if you have to take that step first. So we're going to do that right now. So number one, it's is asking for the cube root of 64. 64 is the one that it's easy to go the wrong direction, so be careful. Is it the cube root or is it the square root? In this case, it's the cube root. So remember our list of um, our perfect squares. Just a quick reminder, these were from uh, what we wrote in 10.1 down. I still, again, think it's a really important piece to have as a data dump for you to be able to look at when you're doing any of this homework. So this would be 4 for the cube root. Number 2, square root of 100 is 10. Now 3, remember, we have to be careful this negative is not in parentheses. Again, I suggest that you actually circle that so that you're super clear. That is on the outside of the root. So we have the fourth root of 256. I don't expect most of you to know this, but this would be a good guess and check. For example, we should actually already know that the number 2 to the fourth power is 16. If you don't, those powers of 2 are really common ones that come up at least up to the power of 5. This is an even number, so it has to be an even number that we raise to the power. So 2 didn't work, so the next best guess would be 4 in our calculator. 4 times 4 is 16. We already set on number 1. 4 uh, to the third power is 64, and if you put in your calculator, 64 times 4, you will get 256. Be careful. Remember that negative stays. Number four and number three, really important to see the difference between these two. On number four, the negative is in parentheses, so that means it goes underneath the radical. So this is the case we talked about in 10.1. I cannot take an even root of a negative number and get a real answer. So right now, my answer here is not real. It's really important to slow down when you see a negative, double check, and Ask yourself, is a negative included? Number five, the negative is also underneath. But be careful. Again, this is a really important reminder from what we talked about in 10.1. Number four and five, the negative are both underneath it. Number four is not real because it's an even root. Number five, the negative comes out because it's an odd root. So this should be a negative two. Again, you can write it out, negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. So you'd have five of them. It's odd power, so 
you'll, the negative will stay. Number six, same idea as I told you on 10.1. We're going to rewrite it first. And I need you to realize that it is the cube root of the numerator and the cube root of the denominator. People tend to get really caught up with the number one. For some reason, it's too easy. One to any power is one. The cube root of eight is two. What I did is my first step for problems one through six was rewrite them in a, in a um, radical form, which most of y'all are more comfortable in. Totally fine. But I want to say that on your tests and quizzes, please be careful because there are some problems that will ask for it to be in a specific format. So please read them. I've seen people in the past get some problems wrong. Not the problems we just did, but um, a problem actually asks for it to be written in a specific form and they don't follow the directions. So remember, directions are always really important. These right here will say simplify. So going to our next group, 7 through 11, you'll notice that we still have a denominator, which is our root for our exponent, but now we also have a power. And what I want to stress to y'all, and this is really important, because um, if you do it in the opposite order, it gets super confusing. If you can, always take the root first. And the reason why is we always want to make a number smaller if we can. It's easier to deal with. It's easier to recognize. So I find that a lot of people want to raise it to a power first, but you're making a number humongous a lot of times, and, it, and that is very confusing. So when we rewrite these, we're going to rewrite them taking the root first, as long as we can see that they're a perfect root. Remember, the root is the denominator of the exponent. So our number seven, the... Three halves means I'm going to take the square root of 36 and then I'm going to raise it to the third power because I'm going to take the root first. Square root of 36 is 6 and now again in your calculator that's 6 times 6 which is 36 times another 6 which is 216. Going to number 8, we're going to take the root first which is the one, um, the cube root of 125. Cube root of 125 is five, and we're gonna square that, which gives me 25. I didn't have to really be careful about parentheses and specific locations on number seven and eight because there were no negatives. Starting with number nine, there are negatives, so again, slow down is and ask yourself, is the negative included? Number nine, the negative is not in parentheses, so the negative is going to stay outside. And I'm gonna take the square root of four first, and then we're gonna raise it to the fifth power. So I'm gonna take the root first, so that's the square root. So this negative again stays outside. I am gonna be careful and keep my parentheses for number nine because again, that negative, I don't want to get confused by it. In this case, it wouldn't have mattered, but it's a good habit to get into if you have a negative there. So my answer here should be a negative 32. Anytime you need to pause this video, pause it, rewind it to, to re-listen to some of the hints. So number 10, the negative is inside the parentheses. So it has to be underneath the radical. So we are taking the cube root and then we are squaring it. So the cube root of a negative 27 is a negative three. Be careful on this one. Notice the negative is still inside because it's raised to the power. So I should get a positive nine. Stop and look at the difference between number nine and number 10. First question is a negative included. If it's included in parentheses, it has to go underneath the radical. Okay? Some people call it a house. It has to be underneath that. And if it's underneath that, it's got to stay in the parentheses until that end piece. Going to number 11, again, the negative is included. And then looking at this, I'm taking the square root, and then I'm cubing it. So in this case, because I'm taking the root first, I cannot take a square root of a negative number, so my answer here is not real. Most of these problems are going to do super quick, but if you're not practicing showing your steps, you're going to forget what those steps are. So please, again, 
stop and say to yourself, take the root first. So now we're going to go to 12, 13, and 14. Really also 15 and 16 that we're applying here, and it's, it's going back to the negative exponent. So remember what I said to y'all, and again, you've got to be careful. A negative exponent is all about location. So a negative exponent means change the location. You may have different wording slightly, but that's what you have to remind yourself. And a negative exponent means move it across the division bar. So if you have a negative exponent in the denominator, I've always recommended move it up to the numerator. If you have a, if you have a negative exponent in the, the top, which is your numerator, then move it across the, 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 the division line and put it in the denominator. All the rules that are for exponents from before, you still want to do that first. So we cannot simplify a number raised to a negative exponent. You have to make it positive first. That's a really important piece. So on number 16, I have a negative exponent. And so I need to move it down to the denominator to make it a positive exponent first. I have to do that first. That's really important. I see a lot of people skip this step, and they may get lucky and get the right answer, but usually it doesn't happen that way on a test. So I've made it a positive exponent. Now I'm going to take the root first. So I'm going to take the fourth root of 16. Fourth root of 16 is 2. Sorry. Fourth root is 2, and then we have to remember to cube it, so my answer there is 1 eighth. Number 13, we've got to change the location first to make it a positive exponent, and that's super important. has to be your first step. Then we're going to take the root first, so I'm rewriting it. The cube, or sorry, the square root of 25 is 5, and my last step is to cube that. So my answer is 1 over 125. Fourteen, we have 8 over 27, all raised to the negative 2 thirds, so remember it's in parentheses. Shortcut here, again, is a reminder back from when we did this in Chapter 5, if you have a fraction raised to a negative exponent, because it means the negative exponent means change the location, we can flip it to make it a positive exponent. So I have 27 over 8 raised to the 2 thirds power. So that's my first step. Now I'm going to take the root of both pieces. So cube root of 27 over 8. That's going to give me 3 over 2, all quantity squared. So my final answer for this problem is 9 fourths. Again, pause it, rewind it, anything you need. But remember, negative exponent means change the location. And you have to do that first if you have a number raised to a negative exponent. If your base is a number, you have to change the location. 15 and 16 are reminding you to make sure you differentiate between a negative exponent and a negative number. Negative exponent means change the location. So I had 16 to the negative 1 fourth. I have to move that 16 down to the denominator. So I have 1 over 16 to the 1 fourth. That means give me the fourth root of 16 in the denominator, which gives me a final answer of 1 half. 16 has a negative 16 to the 1 fourth power, but the negative is not in parentheses, so circle it so that we keep it. And this means the fourth root of 16, so I get a negative 2. Be careful, negative 2 is not a negative, is, is not a 1 half. Okay? The negative exponent means change the location. 
So I'm going to stop here for part one for the first video, and we're going to do a second part for 10.2 um, to finish this. Digest it. The next piece is all about rational exponents and using our combination of rules.